this airplane has flown 350 hours on the original setup and is here now for an update. Basically just loosen all the rubber fittings and there's enough slack in this radiator. I was able to drop it down and drop it down there. And I think that's enough to get to the gearbox. Okay, so everything is clear of the gearbox. You get the breather hose off and we got some wires off for the temperature probe. And now we're just gonna go and take the four bolts that hold it in place and uh, pull those out. And then the gearbox is loose. All right, so let's start right up at the engine. The only approved flywheel for the 110 engine. And uh, obviously the other engines use the same flywheel. It needs a flywheel that looks just like this. Um, the ring gear is only welded to the flywheel in these pockets. There should be no welds in between here. So one weld in each pocket and uh, not just a tack weld. It should be about three quarters of an inch long welds. There should be no powder coating or paint in the middle here. I usually take a little bit of corrosion protective oil and just rub that on there. The back side should be the same. There's a weld at each pocket. And then on the other side, we saw the longer weld in the same location. Nice and clean here without any powder coating or paint. So that's gonna go on to the engine first. After we clean this flange, clean the holes of the powder coating and remove this old style centering bushing. Drive the new centering bushing into the engine with the step side in. Alright, this is the only approved drive flange for the Viking 110. It needs to be a circular one. It needs to have counterbores, very important, for the bolts. The bolts should be about three quarter of an inch long from here to here or 20 millimeter, that would be the right bolts. Some of the uh, uh, earlier bolts that had the flywheel and this piece as one might have shorter bolts, so make sure your bolts are the right length. They'll have a little section without threads. The drive flange will have the dowel pins in it. Uh, counter bores, like we said, has to be circular, not triangular. On the back side, there will be, you can inspect the welds, the welds will be all the way around the dowel pins and then they'll make sure they're flush this half of the weld is always flush to clear the flywheel and then sometimes there's an additional bead put on the outer half of the dowel pin to add a little bit more welds so you would just take a magnifier glass and inspect the welds for cracks the welds are, are only there to retain the dowel pins and keep them from moving fore and aft and we don't use very much heat. We use less heat than we used to actually. So there's a lot, not a lot of heat being transferred into the rest of the part. And as you can see, the whole part is just barely has any color discoloration. All right, so that part is now ready to go on the engine. If you want to, you can dust this with a little bit of uh, primer, just a very light coat, to keep it from rusting. And you can do that with this side too if you'd like. Uh, we usually put little pieces of rubber tubing over the dowel pins to keep them from getting any paint on them. Let's install it. It's a matter of just putting it on the engine, rotating it and lining it up with the bolts. Then we're gonna grab our six bolts. We just talked about them. We're gonna put one drop of engine oil on each bolt and start screwing it into the engine. Uh, now we talked about maybe having to grind a 12.17 millimeter socket to fit in here and once you get that done then you can you can take safety wire and just wind it from here 
through this hole back and forth back and forth just to hold the flywheel or you can make like a knife edge piece of steel that you screw in here with an eight millimeter uh, bolt and it locks this down but whatever way you lock the flywheel uh, you didn't torque these to 40 uh, foot pounds all right so we have the torsion dampers ready of course the part with the curve is the inside and the the straight side is the outside and I just take a little molly coat or any kind of Vaseline or uh, o-ring grease and this and just q-tip just put a little bit coat the inside here on these and then the same with the inside of the centering bushing and then we're ready to uh, put them in place never reuse any of this stuff always use new all right, so part of this update is to get it as close to the our bigger engines since we have really good success with them. Um, so we're gonna upgrade bolts from 3 8 to half inch that gets us more torque and can keep the gearbox on the engine uh, more rigidly. Later on, we're gonna add another piece, but that's for another video. Uh, so we'll get a half inch drill and drill this up. It's, the standoff's are already half inch inside, so we just have to drill through a quarter inch of material here. And then we'll either use the drill or the reamer to do the same with the engine. Now, if your standoffs underneath, uh, they are half inch, but if they're tight on the bolts or you can't get the bolts through easily, just uh, hold them gently with a pair of ice grips. And after you drill through the top, the actual gearbox, then just use a half inch reamer and run it all the way through. And that makes it easy to install. Now here's where a lot of mistakes have been done by people um, facing the engine, it turns counterclockwise. We want these pins to pull on the gearbox. So um, our couplings need to be on this side so that when it goes this way, it can pull the gearbox, which will have a pin over here. So let's install it that way. Curvature goes to the inside and it goes on like that. The gearbox will be pulled. The other two go the same way. Curvature on the inside, install it, same here. Engine rotates this way, put that on here, and gearbox will be pulled. Now we're going to install the gearbox, we'll center that and get these three lined up with the gearbox, and then we'll uh, get the film back on. Now I also want to quickly review, when you go to our website, of course, for anyone that has our engines, there is a tab with service bulletins right here. So you click on that. If you have, for instance, a 110 engine, you just kind of look at the service bulletin, scroll down, all engines. Uh, there's the 110, so there's videos on how to do this, how to do that, and all that. Now, of course, this video that we're making now is gonna be the top one, and we'll see if, which ones of the other ones are um, useful. Now, you'll look down here about the gearbox, and you'll see a couple of things. Input gear update, all right. Be very cautious about that. Uh, the things that are shown in this video should be done after the input gear update check is done, making sure that the gear is not the short gear and you'll read about that here. Basically, you're gonna pry it back and forth in the gearbox and turn it and make sure that there's clearance between the drive coupling on the gearbox and the back of the gearbox. So, review the service bulletins that are here prior to doing this video. Obviously, here at Viking, if you send the gearbox in here, we can put new bearings in, we have some improved bearings. There's a lot that can be done uh, as far as upgrades too that are not mandatory upgrades okay let's do a review on this so number one remove the gearbox remove everything first thing that goes back on the engine is a flywheel it looks just like this the only one that's approved it has to have welds in the pockets only rosette weld and about a three quarter inch weld here now this procedure is all uh, orderly and but we did just throw this together for a video and someone, that being me, uh, tossed those uh, rubber dampers on the wrong direction. So everything you see here is correct. 
the procedural, but the rubber donuts uh, are actually stuck on backwards. They're supposed to be so that the engine pulls the gearbox like we showed before. Clean everything, clean the Loctite out of there, install a drive coupling like you see here. It's the only one that's approved. <clears throat> Make sure the bolts are in counterbores so that they are below these pads so that the rubber cannot rub on the bolt. So there has to be counterbores for the bolts. Attach those with the proper length, about three quarter inch or 20 millimeter long bolts and tighten to 40 foot pounds. Install the centering bushing, which we can't see anymore. Drive it into the engine with a tapered side first. <clears throat> Remove any existing centering bushing or ring or brass piece or anything that might be in the crankshaft. Install a new set of drive couplings, rubber drive couplings. Trim them kind of just exactly like the comfort bike. Use a little bit of um, um, O-ring grease on all pieces, including inside the centering bushing. Install the gearbox. Or before you install, it, install, install the gearbox, drill and ream all the bushings and the gearbox for half inch. X, uh, X3. Except this one is already drilled for a bigger bolt. <clears throat> this bolt is 110 millimeter before. You get a 120 millimeter replacement bolt here. These are six and a half inches long. This is five and a half inches long. Um, half inch increments are available here at Viking or you can get them at uh, McMaster Park. Use three washers in addition to the existing spacers so that the end result is a setup where the bushings or drive couplings can move back and forth about a hundred thousandths. everything down to the engine make sure if you have one of these pieces that that goes on as well that holds the radiator on this setup torque these bolts to 70 foot pounds we were able to put a washer on this side we might be able to put a smaller washer on this side an AN washer torque this one down here to 70 foot pounds that kind of torque. Torque the one that screws into the engine to 40 foot-pounds. It's threaded into the engine right here. Make sure you put gear oil back in the gearbox and you should be good to go. Now here's an example of uh, where there was either inadequate torque, you can see a little bit of movement there, or the uh, flywheel was riding up on the weld a little bit. So just make sure everything is flat and clean and no primer in between the parts and, and then just uh, track your flywheel, you know, make sure that the flywheel is tracking good when you crank the engine over and looking at it from the side. Here's an example of a drive flange that should not be used Initially, it was uh, tested and thought that the rubber couplings would clear the bolts without any counterbores on the drive flange. That proved to be uh, wrong, and an upgrade needed to be done where the bolts are counterbored just slightly to the flange, so there's no way that the rubber can touch the bolt heads. So there's been an update on our website about uh, a gear that was a little short. It was initial gears that were put in these gearboxes. It was a batch of gears that ended up being a sixteenth of an inch short for the input gear. And as you can see, there was rubbing going on here. And we're going to look at another picture that shows why that can cause problems. Okay, study this picture. There's been some talk by people that 
don't even own these engines that have been speculating about why there was a drive coupling failure on this uh, 110 engine. Well, if you look at this groove or this start of this groove on the back of this gold gearbox, this is exactly in line with the weld on the back of the drive coupling that spins. So it's, uh, that gear was a little short and the bearing that was holding the gear had worn after a few hundred hours and the part had gotten closer and closer to the housing itself and eventually started just brushing against the housing. Now there was no failure on this particular gearbox, but if you look at some of those pictures that were being presented, you will see a large groove in this area. And that's the piece uh, just slightly hitting and then hitting harder and hitting harder and of course spinning at thousands of uh, RPMs and then eventually failing an ear off of the gearbox. Now, luckily this drive system is redundant and it will always take you home but you want to inspect every year on your condition inspection for the drive coupling. Make sure it has plenty of clearance between the gearbox aft housing and the welds that are on the dowel pins on the part that drives this. Now you can see more rubbing in this picture. Now, if there's ever any doubt that there's enough clearance between the drive coupling on the gearbox and the housing, this snap ring can be used and placed on the gear. This will prevent the drive coupling pictured right here from being pushed all the way up and it will hold it away from the gearbox. Any speculation by people not in the know about the design of the gearbox that the parts are not strong enough and there's fracture cracks and welds that are not adequate and all that is not correct. The parts are forged. The welds that hold the dowels in are only there. They're professionally done and there are no cracks in the welds. The drive couplings are used on much, much more powerful engines than the 110. The issue is the part touching the back of the gearbox. The repeated hitting by the part making a groove in the housing is what eventually will make one ear fail. And there's nothing to do with any other speculation of the part. Now, to install the snap ring we just showed in order to keep the part further away, the gearbox has to be disassembled and the drive coupling pulled off and pressed back on with the snap ring. Since there's no approved procedure for any opening or work on the gearbox in the field, since UPS and FedEx and other carriers can deliver a gearbox to Viking aircraft engines in a matter of a day or two from anywhere in the world, there's no need for any field work on this gearbox, nor is it approved. So if you think you don't have enough clearance in this area, the gearbox should be sent back to Viking for service to have this done. Here's a picture showing the clearance between the drive spider that go on the gearbox and the housing. This needs to be checked regularly or have it updated for additional clearance. Here's a picture of a flywheel that was incorrectly welded. The long welds should be where the pocket welds are and there should be no weld where the long weld is. So it should move to the right and to the left and uh, locate the welds in those places and no weld in the middle like this picture shows. Here you can see the very important centering bushing. It's an extremely important part. Seems like a very little unimportant part, but it is what centers the gearbox on the engine. You know, clearly this has to be done with every time the gearbox is removed and reinstalled. This plastic part is an initial centering part and does 
wear out as soon as you start the engine. It is only meant for static installation of the gearbox and a new part has to be used every time the gearbox is installed. Here's a picture of the correct drive coupling on the flywheel with the counterbores showing. This picture shows the correct installation of the drive couplings. There are three of them. They're all rounded on the corners the way that we ship them. It is not a continuous circle, which is not approved. And uh, the engine, which here turns counterclockwise, pulls the gearbox around and does not push it. And here are a few other things about the 110 engine which are critical to its safe operation. And we're gonna add them at the end of this video so that most of the things related to the engine can be found or at least mentioned in one place. One is aftermarket parts, such as aftermarket ECUs or electronics that operate and run, physically run the engine. Those should not be used the original ECU needs to operate the engine safely and should be wired such that only one part of it or one side of the ECU of the dual system is now being used, eliminating the select switch, which has shown problems. If there's ever backfires during starting, hard starting, things like that, then just one of these hard starts or backfires is grounds for grounding the airplane, inspecting the drive couplings, and then fixing the ECU issue by upgrading it to a newer version where the timing and such can be set for smooth starts. There is a manual for the Viking 110, so use that. But also there are certain things that are different from the manual throughout the years. We recommend a 1040 weight oil for the 110. The original oil tank was built with a oil pickup tube that goes through O-rings and are mounted to the oil pump behind the alternator. This pickup tube works fine if as long as you have good oil pressure throughout the flight. Another style of pickup tube had a bung welded to the top of the tank and a rigid aluminum tube going to it. The pickup tube part that is now inside the tank has had a failure and there is a service bulletin on it. As far as pulleys on the engine, there's an idler pulley on the top of the engine towards the back for the serpentine belt. If it says Viking on it or it is an aluminum pulley, meaning you put a magnet on it, it has been grounded in, through a service bolt in years ago. And a Gates pulley out of steel replaces it. Install it with the proper bolt and spacer so it is aligned with other pulleys. We now also recommend that the crankshaft pulley that is an aftermarket lightweight pulley be replaced with the OEM Honda Fit, uh, like a 2012 Honda Fit steel pulley for increased service life out of the engine. Be sure that when this is done, that the seal that is being installed matches both the rear cover and the Honda crankshaft pulley. The alternator is securely mounted on this engine, except for a few models where only a, a single mounting ear is locating the alternator on the top mount. If this is the case, there is a part that bolts to the engine to increase the strength by adding a ear, a mounting ear for a dual mounting ear on top and a single on the bottom. Here's a picture showing the bottom of an oil tank of the Viking 110 that we produced a few years back. 
the oil tank itself went through a few different designs. The 110 engine was laying on its side and a lot of machine parts were made for this engine. It is a good engine, but it does need a little bit more tweaking to maintain it and keep it running securely than our later upright engines. Here is a builder that modified the bottom of the tank with a catch can that's welded to it to increase oil flow to the engine. We have also done this on some engines and it is a worthwhile consideration or mod. Some oil tanks were welded together top and bottom and some were glued together with a groove and the right stuff sealer. Those glued together will not have any cracks but sometimes will have to be resealed. Those that are welded together should be inspected regularly for fine cracks along the welds. And if found, tank removed, welds fixed, and plates welded as we show around the tank for additional support. All this work, of course, is available as we support these engines at Viking as well by shipping the parts here. Also keep in mind that in a couple of instances where the, the rubber coupling, would, uh, one link of the rubber coupling failed, the engine was perfectly fine to fly and get home or to the nearest airport type of deal. However, the builder did not comply with the part of the service bulletin that directs you to move all coolant tubes away from this area and route them around and in front of the gearbox instead. So as you can see there's about 20 items or so that need to be addressed with the Viking 110. None of them are costly but they need to be taken care of for further use.